Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky has met with political leaders in Washington, D.C. in a bid to get more support for his country's fight against Russia. The White House says current aid for Ukraine will run out by the end of the year as Republicans in Congress refuse to release additional funds. After meeting Zelensky, President Biden warned Republicans they would be giving Russian leader Vladimir Putin a Christmas gift if they withheld military aid. Putin is banking on the United States failing to deliver for Ukraine. We must, we must, we must prove him wrong. Thank you. A strong warning from U.S. President Joe Biden, directed straight at the United States Congress, where Republicans are blocking a $61 billion defense package for Ukraine. Um, thank you, Mr. President. Standing beside him, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said he had received positive signals from lawmakers about the possibility of more aid, but no results yet. And as U.S. funding for Ukraine is fast running out, Republicans are digging their heels in. Republican Speaker of the House of Representatives, Mike Johnson, came out of an earlier meeting with Zelensky unmoved. And so what the Biden administration seems to be asking for is billions of additional dollars with no appropriate oversight, no clear strategy to win, and, and none of the answers that I think the American people are owed. Domestic politics is also getting in the way. Republicans say they won't approve further financial support to Ukraine unless Biden agrees to tougher reforms to reduce immigration across the southern U.S. border. Welcome back. The U.S. president underlined his backing of Ukraine several times during Zelensky's short trip to D.C. But without the support of Congress, he could only send him home with a fraction of the funding he's hoping for. All right, let's bring in DW's Ukraine correspondent Nick Connolly in Kyiv. Nick, before we get into what's happening in the US, talk to us a bit about what's happening in Kyiv because there were reports overnight about missiles striking a hospital. Well, we were all woken up here, Biresh, at about 3 a.m. local time by very loud bangs. I think where we were, that was the air defense missiles working. But we've heard now in recent um, kind of hour or so from the authorities say that 10 Russian ballistic missiles were intercepted. They were all intercepted, according to these reports. But there has been significant damage from debris from those falling missiles. It has to be said this is quite an achievement. Those ballistic missiles fly a lot faster and a lot higher than more conventional cruise missiles. And these were missiles that up to a couple of months ago, Ukraine wouldn't have been able to down. So Russia is stepping up its attack on Kiev. But for now, Kiev seemingly able to defend itself, albeit at significant cost and about 50 people injured to various degrees. And I think it's a reminder now that Zelensky was in D.C. that Russia is still very much attacking places behind the front lines like Kiev and that this isn't a war that isn't just happening somewhere on the front lines. Nick, we're talking of missile attacks and therefore we have to talk about Ukrainian air defences because they come into the picture. But would they be, for instance, affected if US aid to Ukraine were to be phased out or significantly reduced? Well, certainly the U.S. is basically irreplaceable as a supplier of military aid. In terms of financial aid, keeping Ukraine's pensions and wages paid, that is something that European countries, Japan, other donors are increasingly taking over and playing a bigger role in. But in terms of providing things like uh, missiles for the Patriot missile system, which we presume might have been used today to down those Russian missiles, there is basically no alternative. And even if Ukraine were to get money from other countries to buy U.S. weapons, if you're buying these things commercially, you often have to wait years to get them, whereas the U.S. currently is just taking things out of its storage and giving it directly to the Ukrainians to be able to basically keep up with this barrage of, of, of Russian missiles. So there really isn't any way around that uh, U.S. supply of weapons. And right now, basically, without U.S. support, it looks like Ukraine would at best be able to go into kind of defensive mode and basically try and hold the territory it's currently in control of. That being said, the Ukrainian counteroffensive against Russian troops hasn't uh, gone to plan. How does the Ukrainian government intend to win this war? Look, when you talk to Ukrainian military people off 
the record off camera, they will tell you this. They say, we tried in the summer to do what you told us. We tried to follow the NATO doctrine. We got all those tanks, we put them in a big column and we tried to attack on one section of the front line. And that just doesn't work if you don't have control of the airspace. They say the Americans or the Europeans would never have done the same kind of attack, would never have put their troops at that risk without air superiority. And the other thing that has basically taken everyone by surprise is what a role uh, drones, particularly uh, kamikaze uh, drones, play. Basically, nothing can be kept secret on the front lines. Lots of that armoured technology that used to be able to move is now basically pinned to one location, has to basically hide, because as soon as any tanks start moving, those drones come in and destroy uh, tech that is worth a lot more than those drones cost. So they are now looking at smaller operations, trying to get behind Russian lines and uh, hoping that they can break the logistics of the Russian side. We'll leave it there for the time being. Thanks so much for joining us today. DW correspondent Nick Connolly in Kiev. Thanks so much.